How, the only way we build our immune system is by exposure. When I have a patient that comes into my office and they're sniffling and runny nose and coughing and sick as a dog, new patient, I call my beautiful wife up and say, bring my kids down. Why? Because I want them to sneeze on my kids. <laughs> you don't want them to get around people with the flu. Heck yeah. You do? I want them to get the flu. How do you, how do you, here, do you know that if you come in contact with the flu once, guess what, you're immune the rest of your life? But see what happens is this, we, we try to fear bugs. Guess what, do you guys know you have more bugs in and on your skin than you have human cells? So we have to use our immune system by exposure. And that's how you get lifetime immunity, stop fearing bugs. What are, oh, good question. So here's a question, what happens, so what happens if you do get in a situation where you're starting to know your health and you do actually do what? You do get a headache. Okay, can anybody tell me where aspirin came from? Aspirin, do you know that every drug came from an herb? Do you know that? And most drugs are herbs with chemicals on them. So you just Google this. Type in willow bark. Aspirin came from willow bark. We used to make fun of the Native Americans when they chew on what? Bark. Willow bark actually is aspirin. It's just that it's without a little salergesic chemical on there. So actually, so you can take things like salergesic and stuff, which is willow bark, and I'll actually get rid of your headache. But my question is this you still don't get a headache because you lack aspirin in your body. There's a reason why you have that inflammatory res response to your brain. But if you're trying to keep the headache down while you're recovering to get rid of those headaches, things like willow bark work really well. You just buy like willow bark? Yeah, actually that's stuff you can buy from a health food store. You know what I'm saying? So I have a problem. That would be great. Yeah? Is there something you can do to offset the fillings that are passed? Yeah, here. If you're toxic, Find out what you're toxic on, find the proper doctor, and detoxify. See, our body detoxifies all the time. It's just that we're so toxic, our buckets are filling up and filling up and filling up so much that the balance never happens. So we got to learn to detoxify properly. Can anybody tell me what the number one detoxifying food on the planet is? Beets. Still one of my favorite things on the planet. Beets. What's number two? No? Goji berries. See, they both have the highest methyl groups. Methylation of the liver. That's why you should have beet juice or have beets ground up in a Vitamix and stuff like that at least a couple times per week. Oh, wow. Wait, how much, how, how expensive is that? Not expensive. See, become a healthy routine. Remember, see, as a doctor, I'm going to get into the food. As a doctor, I may, I, all these things I show you, I may use medicinal things to help you reverse that condition and stuff like that, but I'm going to teach you more about what? How to keep yourself well so you're not coming back and paying me money. Do you follow me? I'm being blunt about that, but here, if, here, I can appeal to Dan in one way. See, women, you guys do stuff emotionally and then you justify it logically. It's <laughs> so true. You do. Guys are a little different. Guys think logically right away. We're not emotional creatures. We're not. That's just us. They ask God why. I don't know why. Okay? The idea is, Dan's going to, you know, I'm going to appeal to Dan compared to appeal to you guys. I'm going to say, Dan, guess what? If you don't eat well, you know that money you're making? It's coming to me. And he's going to go, you're following that program, honey. <laughs> Honestly. Do you see what I'm saying? Because if I can teach you lifestyle stuff that doesn't cost you money, do you see what I'm saying? That you have to buy food anyways. Does that make sense? See, and that's what I want to do is I want you to teach you lifestyle stuff so you can be healthy, you can stay that way. All right. Now, this is going to blow your mind away when we're talking about psychiatry. Okay, ladies, this is going to be very important for you guys. Okay, because this will change your life forever. Guys, here's what happens. I'm going to show you how to be with this to turn that stressed out woman that doesn't want to have sex into a kitten no matter what age you are, okay? So listen closely. There's a reason why I have four children, okay? So here's what happens. By a woman, I was told she could never have children, that they almost pulled her uterus out. That's my beautiful bride, okay? Now, so here, no joke, my, my, my beautiful wife, Chris, usually travels with me, but because of being pregnant, it's kind of funny because she's still going through nausea stays, and she says, honey, you did this to me. I'm like, no, I'm only half responsible, <laughs> okay? Because nausea is not a problem with pregnancy. But the idea is, for example, is this is no joke. She actually had such bad female hormones, we're going to cover that. Isn't it funny? Like I said, my first real female hormone case was who? My beautiful bride I met before I graduated college, okay? I'm going to show you what we did. I'll show you what, a lot of these, okay? Now, the paradigm, the new paradigm of psychiatry, psychology, how this really works, because there's a lot of mistakes. Now, once again, I have taught you theory or anatomy so far. So I'm going to teach you more anatomy to understand how it works. It's called a stress response. Here, we have an office down in Florida. Dr. Tom actually lives on a golf course. So one day I decided to do what? I said, I came to this house for the first time. I saw a green outside. I love golf. 
So I go to walk outside to walk by the green, and all of a sudden there's a pond over there. So I go walking out, and what the hell's by the pond? An alligator. Do you think I was a little stressed out? <laughs> what happened to my adrenaline? What happened to my sugar levels? What happened to my cholesterol levels? Now, if I took my blood right away, I'd have been sick, right? You know what I'm saying? See, so what happened is my whole stress response, the brain neurological system told my adrenal glands. The adrenal glands are called what gland? Our stress gland. Why? Because it adapts to the stress. Do you follow me? So it produces a hormone called epinephrine and norepinephrine, adrenaline and noradrenaline. Do you follow me on that? I wanted to get that point. So here's what happens. Our body goes into fight or flight. We change, remember, our, our nervous system detects a stimulus. Now, that stimulus can be what? Fake. Do you follow me? Hypochondriacs become very sick. Why? Because they create it. If you worry, you create it. But what happens if you have trauma toxins or thoughts? You create illness. So all these hormone patterns change. And guess what happens? There's your hormones. Epinephrine, norepinephrine. Adrenaline, noradrenaline. But guess what? Here's the biggest point, and this is the biggest mistake. Not all neurotransmitters are made in the brain. Whoa, hold the phone. Because norepinephrine and epinephrine are actually neurotransmitters, but they're not made in the brain. Where are they made in? The adrenal glands. So the adrenal glands, they have an effect on your brain. So if I eat something bad, does that affect my brain? Do you see what I'm saying? Now, so I want to kind of show you this. Have you ever, I go back to my example as far as like a doctor speaking to you and you not understand what you're saying. There's only one term I put in this whole presentation that I want you to learn. It's called the endochromaphrine cell. Why are those cells so important? Because they make and store about 90% of your body's serotonin. I don't care who you are, guys. If you have low serotonin, you will have what? Say it out loud. Depression. Depression. If you have high serotonin, you will have what? Anxiety. High. There's that balance, ladies. Remember? There's a balance. See, so what happens? These cells make it. You say, well, Doc, guess where those cells are? Let's read the definition of it. The endocrine cells are found where, guys? You ever had a gut feeling before? 90% of your serotonin is made in your GI. Depression is not a, a brain issue. It's a what issue? It's a gut issue. Why do you think eating can change your what so quickly? Your mood. I'm going to show you why instead of craving an organic salad during stress lays, you crave what? Chocolate. Thank you. I'll show you the science behind it. Why? And you have to have chocolate every day to be healthy. I'll show you. Now, so let's take Emery. Let's uh, guys, you laugh, but you guys are going to give me a standing ovation when I show you the research behind it. Okay? I promise you. Because I'm your doctor. You better be day eating chocolate every day. Okay? So here's what happens. Emery, she's 14 years old. Here's a championship dancer, and if anybody wants to talk to her mother or Renee, I'll give you a name. If I ever use anybody's name, it's because I have written permission. Do you follow me? I'm very private about everybody. But they love to tell their story when something happens. So Emery comes in. She's on six different antidepressants. You say, that's abnormal. No, it's not. It's very normal. Okay? So what happens is she actually, a little girl, all of a sudden one day started to get some anxiety. Then started to actually do what? Started to, didn't want to go to school, didn't be around people. So you had this championship dancer dancing in front of everybody, to now she, they would have to drag her in. And they almost did shock therapy to her brain. So, guess what happens? Everybody ends up in my offices when? When they want to try to get healthy? No, when everything else what? Fails. So guess what happened? So we started taking care of her, and I said, well, listen, what's my motto? We don't what? We don't guess, we what? It sounds so simple, doesn't it? Because wait, would you agree with me that there is something going on up here? So what I did is I decided to test her hormones for her brain. Those are called what? Neurotransmitters. So let's look at her epinephrine. I know it's hard to see. Her epinephrine, here, let's make it simple. See how you can see red and black? Red is abnormal, black is normal. If I would have drove up here in my truck with that had 10 parts and nine of them were bad, do you think I would have took that truck up here? Yet they're asking this little girl to go out and have this not working well to function. Ladies, is this really funny as this? Let's say, oh, I forgot your name again. And what's your daughter's name? Yeah. Amanda. Let's say Amanda right now came and said, Doc, you know, I'm having a little cramps. My cycle's a little tough. I'm a little moody. I'm going to say to her, Amanda, toughen up. <laughs> See, you wouldn't say that. But why when it comes to psychiatric problems, they say what? Toughen up. See, because they understand the hormones here, but they don't test them here. Do you notice that? How many psychiatrists ever test neurotransmitters? Do you follow me on that? So what well, we did, we decided to test her. And then guess what? So her stress hormones were extremely elevated and her serotonin was very low. So I don't care how much you spank this girl. I don't care how much counseling, stupid stuff, um, all other things that way. If you don't change the chemistry, can she have balance? 
No, she can't. And see, it's ridiculous because here's what happens. So I'll tell you what happened to her. It's kind of cool. So what happens is this, histamine. Wait, histamine? Wait, that's histamine. Allergy. No, no. Histamine is as produced by immune system, but your immune system produces neurotransmitters. So can your immune system affect you? What if you get a vaccine and damage your immune system? Could that affect you and create an autism kid? Mm -hmm. Ooh, oh, the phone there. You know what I'm saying? Why do you think when they look at people that are depressed or autism, they scan their brains and say they're normal? They're not normal. They one gear looked at it, and they didn't look at the other gears that were affecting it. Do you follow me on that? So here's what happened. So what she have? Give you a little scenario. She actually had an infection in her GI. Because why? Because her, her immune system is off, and 90% of her immune, or 80% of her immune system resides where? In your GI. So I did a stool analysis, found she had an infection, started to kill off the infection. Guess what happened? Within three weeks, she was off three of her actually antidepressants. Within two months, she was off all of them. Who took her off? The same doctor that put her on. Because there was no need for them. Now, did I naturally treat her, or did I create homostasis and balance the way her body was genetically programmed to be? Do you see what I'm saying? So, this is the big thing. This is one of the most important test lays you can ever have in your life. That stress hormone is called cortisol. Do you follow me on that? So, so what happens is we have a rhythm, ladies. We, even guys, you do have this rhythm too. Stress hormones, guys, are very high in the morning. Why is adrenaline and cortisol very high in the morning? Do you know that bipeds have larger adrenals than quadrupeds? Why? Because adrenaline gets your butt up. Do you follow me? Ladies, you ever have a problem getting this way in the morning? Now, I can prove to you that half you guys are sick in this room right now. Let me prove it to you. Please be honest with me. How many women here get their second wind at night? Okay. Now, let me show you. But your hormone levels, for example, as they progress through the day, are supposed to go down. So when your daily hormonal rhythm starts to become abnormal, you wonder why your monthly rhythm is what? Abnormal. abnormal. You're not supposed to have a second wind, guys. You're supposed to actually have more energy in the morning than you do at nighttime. Do you follow me on that? And this is measurable. So guess what happens? But if you're under stress, what happens to those hormones? They go high right away, right? So you can measure them. So when you see that, you can measure women's hormones through the course of the day four times, and you find out if they're what? under chronic stress, but over time, it's just like a fuel tank. That hormone will start to wear out, and then it'll be bottom barrel, and then guess what you'll end up in? And then if over time, the second highest diagnosis in the United States is called chronic fatigue what? Ooh, ladies, you ever suffer with that? You bet your butt. I can't get my butt out of bed, but I got a little excitement at nighttime. That's not supposed to happen that way. Your body's supposed to shut down like it's supposed to, to repair. That's what it's meant to do. That's why when you're pushing yourself to stay up late at night, you're causing hormonal problems. Here's the big thing. This is the biggest thing. If I can get you to think this way, here's the number one medical myth that is destroying people's life, especially guys, and I'll show it to you. Okay, remember you can talk about the carpenter? You need raw materials to build your house, right? What are all hormones, male and female, made out of? Where are they made from? Thank you, cholesterol. Wait. Wait, hold the phone. Cholesterol is bad. Who the heck gave you that BS? The doctor who's going to sell you the number one sold drug for the past 30 years. You know what I'm saying? It's ridiculous. All statin drugs, Liptor has been the number one sold drug. All statin drugs are, are significant. Now, if you don't have cholesterol, you can't produce your male and female hormones. Now, guys, let me tell you why this is so important. Who takes more cholesterol-lowering drugs, men or women? Men do by far. They're starting to give women too, and you know what one of the major side effects of cholesterol drugs are? Hormone deficiencies. It says it right on there. Why? Because, guys, if you reduce your cholesterol, so guys, lower your cholesterol, you now lower your testosterone. And guess what happens? Low cholesterol, something else doesn't get high either. I've never met a man that had impotence that wasn't taking a statin drug. Now, this is not a joke because I have teenagers this happens to. Remember, go back to this rhythm. Let's go back to this rhythm. Oops, sorry. Eh, eh, eh. Guys, hormones are supposed to be what in the morning? High. So how does a woman know, for example, her hormones are high in the morning? She doesn't. How does a guy know? So as his hormones come up in the morning, what else comes up? <laughs> like my, my, my example is when a guy rolls over in the morning, he's supposed to stop halfway. Okay? <laughs> That's, what, that's, what, that's when your husband says those magical words to you in the morning. Honey, you awake? <laughs> okay? 
Now, so here's what happens. It's because hormone levels are high, okay? See, but the sad part is this. Guys, no joke. Tomorrow morning, you don't wake up with an erection. Guess what happened? Your hormone levels are low. <laughs> Some of you girls are like, honey, what's wrong with you, okay? <laughs> now, the point is this, and it sounds funny, but guess what? I asked teenage boys, dude, you wake up with an erection? No, oops, that's bad. If you're taking a statin drug, good luck. Now, this is significant because why? Here's your stress pathway, guys. Trauma, toxins, and thoughts. Now, why is this significant? Stress hormones are produced from cholesterol. So could stress then affect our male and female hormones? Let me show you how this works from the Swiss watch principle. Ladies, have you ever had so much stress that you either delayed or skipped your cycle? Because you steal the number one hormone that you're deficient in, which is what, ladies? Do you follow me? See, that's why stress, stress, stress. I exercise too much. I'm actually stressed out mentally. I have trauma, and it throws off your male and female hormones. That's why, guess what? When a guy stresses out, does it really affect his testosterone levels? No. That's why guys don't lose their sex drive during stress. If your progesterone levels drop, ladies, what the hell? You, your sex drive drops. Does that follow me? See, I mean, it sounds funny because we're talking about sex, but understand, it's a very big problem. It really is. Because you start bringing up, guys, you start bringing up your woman's hormones, guess what happens? She turns into that kitten. It's kind of nice, you know? That's what's supposed to happen. Because why? But when they're low, you're asking your wife to run in an empty fuel tank. You know what I'm saying? And it's because of what, guys? What's that key word? And stress can be toxic. Stress can be trauma. And stress can be what? Thoughts. Okay? Now, look at I even defined it. You know me. I have to define everything. Cholesterol, every cell membrane is made of cholesterol. Now think about that. So they're teaching people totally wrong. It's the biggest medical myth there has in the head. Oh, cholesterol, is, it's your heart. No, it doesn't. It doesn't destroy your heart. Guess what? 400,000 people will die this year taking their statin drugs. Do they forget about it? Do you see what I'm saying? People with heart disease. They didn't forget their drugs they were taking every day and their heart's still destroyed. And I'll go with that a little bit later. Now, so there's your adrenal glands. Now, ladies, this is why it's so important. The adrenal glands contribute one-third of your female hormones. It also contributes to 50% if you're postmenopausal. Now think about that. Ovaries and uterus start to shut down. The adrenals now kick up. Ladies, if you're in menopause, let me give you an example. All of a sudden, ladies, you go through menopause, your adrenals are supposed to kick up. What if they're weak? There's only one tissue left that produces hormone. And I didn't say organ, one tissue. What tissue is it? It's called fat tissue. So then there what happens. Oh, doc, I don't know why. I exercise, I eat good, and I'm starting to get my what? My tire. Because your adrenals are what? Weak. So you want to start melting that weight away, make sure your adrenals are normal. But also, guess what? It contributes to pregnancy. If you're stressed out, do you think you get pregnant? Most women that come for me for infertility, it's not because they're infertile. It's because they're running an empty fuel tank and the body says, listen. Now think about this. If you are stressed out, will that lower your progesterone levels, yes or yes? yes. What, is the, what is the number one cause of miscarriage? Lack of what? Progesterone. progesterone. So they'll jack you up with synthetic progesterone instead of asking why it depleted in the first place. Okay? Now, here's the one thing I have to talk about. The adrenal glands also majorly control what organ, ladies? Your thyroid. Next week in Green Bay, I'm teaching it twice. I'm going to teach you a thyroid different than everybody will on the planet. Let me give you a little prelude. Your adrenal glands, for example, have a major control of your thyroid. Who says so? You guys ever heard of PDR, the physician dex reference? They have to know all the interactions. Can somebody tell me one of the major contraindications for levothyroxine or, thyro or, or synthroid, which are the primary drugs? It's what? It says right here. You do not dare take this medication if you have adrenal insufficiency. Now, please do me a favor. If somebody wants to be my example, I mean, you don't have to be. Anybody here take levothyroxine or synthroid? Did they test your adrenals before they did it? Oops. Who said so? No, I guarantee they didn't. They don't test them. Well, here, did any of you guys have your hormones tested four times through the day? Then guess what? They never test it. But wait, who says you not be on that medication? Because here's what happens. If you take that medication, you drive your adrenals down and make it worse. And that's why you wonder why you go through more hormonal problems taking this stuff. And then you start with some milligrams, then you do what? Go up and go up and go up. Do you follow me on that? See, this is their stuff. Do you follow me? This is not me. Look this up yourself. Ask your doctor to grab his PDR or your physician desk reference and say, well, Doc, why haven't you tested my adrenals? Uh, well, for what? You're not even supposed to give me this medication before that. Why am I teaching you this crap? 
I'm not joking. Why? Because they're not. I promise you, I'll teach you the thyroid so differently. That they test. They, remember, if they can't test it, drug it, they, can't, they won't test Or if they can't drug it, they won't test it. Because that's what it's for. Okay? Now, <laughs> ladies, you a little frustrated now? Ah! Do you notice she has a metal filling right there? I was going to call her and tell her, get that out of there. So here's what happens. Stress. We're going to go into this big time, and I'm going to teach you guys nutrition better than anybody has ever have, because why? Once again, it's not me. This is basic nutrition that we mess up so significantly. Now, here's a question for you. When we get stressed, what do we usually crave? You ever spell stressed backwards? Stress spelled backwards is desserts. Now, who's more emotional, men or women? Yeah. Women. Here, so ladies, let me show you why you struggle so much with food. I got quoted in the Green Bay Press Gazette about six, seven years ago because this nutritionist, which my degree is more than hers is, nutritionist said, you're teaching all this stuff wrong, you're doing this, this, and so she wanted to come and debate me. I said, okay, let's debate. And I said to her, I said, guess what? She goes, you said the USDA food pyramid is horrible and blah, 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 blah. I said, yeah. Do you know why? Because if you eat like the USDA food pyramid, you will start to look like it. <laughs> okay? Because that's what we're doing. We have fat, grain-fed people. Okay? And, so, and the sad part is this, but the reason why we do this is because when women, when you're stressed, you grab for the raw things because why? This is my love, this quote that I created. Food is more emotional than ever is physical. With the exception of sex, guess what? Food brings more pleasure, sometimes even more. That's why we grab for it all the time. And we grab for it for the right reason. I'll show you why we grab chocolate. You ready? So here, I'm going to teach you healthy desserts without the what? Without the guilt. See my guilt meter? Now, by law, what I have to do, I have to give you all the nutritional facts, so follow with me on this so I don't get sued by the FDA. So here we go. So here's, our, here's my nutritional facts. I promise you they're a bunch of happiness, 100%, smiles, health, and don't worry, they have been approved by the FDA, the Fantastic Dessert Association that I created. <laughs> so let's go through. So here, now some people think, well, Doc, you're such a healthy eater, so this must be you. <laughs> people think I'm walking around eating grass all day. I'm going to tell you, here's what happens. You know what I want all freaking day? I want cookies. I want cookies. I want chocolate all day. Except for I eat the good stuff you don't. Do you want to find out? So here, so let's start interacting a little bit more. If I were to ask you, is sugar good for you, you would tell me? No. no. Oh, you guys are so sick. Your body runs on sugar. But here's what happens. You're so used to Splenda, artificial sugar, white sugar, processed sugar, but our body runs on glucose. You ever hear of the word essential? That means if you don't eat it, you cannot make it. So it has to be eaten. What's one of our number one essential sugars? Glucose. But you guys grab maybe this morning for Captain Crunch when I grabbed the strawberry. You follow me? See, so it's essential. Your brain runs 100% on sugar. You don't want to run on fat. That's, that's diesel fuel. You want to run on rocket fuel, which is glucose. But here's all of our essential sugars. Now, a carpenter thinking, going, okay, remember, carpenter thinking, where do you get all of your essential sugars from? Breast milk. Now, I'm not picking on somebody, but who, who's the oldest person in this room? Somebody give me your ages. Anybody over 60? 82. 82. Now, I will do this if she was a patient of mine. What's your name, young lady? Carol. Carol, were you breastfed? Okay, so as a carpenter, what am I thinking? Had she, because the number one place you get all your essential sugars is what? Breast milk. Now, you, mean, you mean not Walmart fortified cow's milk, a bunch of crap and sugar in it? So when I'm going to think, I'm going to ask Carol if she's breastfed, well, but wait, doc, she's in for hormonal problems. But I want to know if she's been rebuilding her body since the day she was born or she's been missing the lumber. You follow me on that? See, that's how we, that's how we should doctor. We got to find out how long she's been not getting what she needed. Remember, the plant says what? What does she need? Okay. Now, I'm also a chiropractor. So is Michelle. And so is Michelle. You ever heard of the thing called glucosamine? Glucosamine is good for what? So if I'm a chiropractor, I dang better make sure that if I adjust somebody and realign it, I want to give those essential sugars like glucosamine to help rebuild the joint. Otherwise, if you adjust them, guess what could happen? It doesn't rebuild and it goes right back out. Do you ever notice they have to go again and again and again and again? Do you follow me on that? So now, there's one thing that I want to yell at you ladies for is this. Now, I guess I shouldn't for Michelle's business, but here's what happens. Thank you. Trauma. Stop crossing your legs. We call that job security as a chiropractor. 
Yes. <clears throat> Michelle, good patient right here. Because cross your leg causes neurological damage, dis dis disrupts function, therefore you got to come in and get this fixed. Okay? So remember, prevention, stop slipping on the banana peels. Okay? So these are essential sugars. Now they're very important, so let's do this. I also love this sugar, xylose. You guys have a lot of it up here, you know why? I almost stopped and jumped in out of my car and ran up to one today. No. Xylitol comes from what? Birch trees. Birch trees. Xylose, that's what gives that white pigment color that way. Now remember that, because xylose, for example, is this. Think about it this way. Xylitol is antibacterial, antifungal. It helps with stomach cancers and intestinal cancers. Now here's the cool thing is this. I have to give you a copy, guys, because you know I'm a research person. Xylitol, for example, on WebMD, guess what? It's extracted from birchwood to make what, guys? Medicine. And it's, you know what it's used for for kids? It's number one, number one treatment for upper ear, inner ear infections. So my kids, since they have been born, have been getting what? Xylitol. Oh, wait, you're telling me, Doc, if you're my doc, you want me to eat sugar? Yes, I do. This is better than sugar. OK? How do you get that? We're going to get it. Don't worry. You're like, wait, where the hell do I get it? Do I go start gnawing on the traverse tree? <laughs> Don't worry, we're going to get there. I got it, just hang on there, hang on, okay? All of a sudden, I'm gonna freaking turn on Fox News and all the people in Eagle River are freaking chewing on birch trees like beavers. I'm like going, oh. Yeah, but in the history of Native American, they chewed on what? Birch bark. It's very sweet. Now, but guess what happens? And this is why I almost jumped out of the car just over here by Treehouse or whatever it was. We're driving, Lake House, whatever it was. So we're driving down. I'm like, Dr. Ainsworth, I'm like, holy crap. And I'm, I want to jump out, but there was a bunch of snow and I had my pretty shoes on. I didn't want to get all dirty. <laughs> is this, wait, medicinal mushrooms grow on. Now wait, why is that important? Because medicinal mushrooms are a sugar that help our immune system. Can anybody tell me where you get antibiotics from? Medicinal mushrooms. Can anybody tell me where you get chemotherapy drugs from? Medicinal mushrooms. So here's the cool thing is this. So let's show you something. Birch bark, betulinic acid, the white stuff, is, inhibits what, guys? Prostate cancer. And here's the funny part is this. Is this Dr. Flynn or the University of Texas A&M and National Institute of Health? This was just done about a year ago. Do you think this will ever make mainstream ma media? Never. Never. Because why? Because if I can teach you to eat xylitol and get medicinal mushrooms, guys, could you prevent prostate cancer? And when you look at this, here's the funny thing is this. When you look at the mushroom, it talks about very simple. In combination of herbs, guys, reishi mushroom is used to treat what? What does it say out there? Prostate cancer. Who, is this Dr. Flynn that says this? No. There's so much research on this for so long, but do you guys ever hear this? No. No. Because the fire department want, doesn't want you to have this. This is powerful. We can prevent all these things if we're doing these things on a regular basis. Now, guys, do you remember what I always told you? I always want to eat what? So in all my books, and I'm going to give a couple away, okay? In all my books, I have to have recipes and dessert recipes and everything like that. Young lady, thanks for being my example. Thank you. Dan, I promise you. Thank you. So what happens is this. It's very simple as this. Is I love to make, I love to make desserts, I love my cookies. So what I have to do is this. So when I find out the medicinal mushrooms that I love, like reishi mushroom, guess what I have to do? I have to make a cookie. Now wait, reishi mushroom is really well for what? Prostate, right? So, but reishi mushroom tastes like somebody, you know, pooped in your mouth. So you have, to, you have to kind of mix it. You have to mix it with a bunch of things to make it taste good, okay? So what I finally did was this. I realized, man, because I want to make sure that everybody's prostate is doing really well for guys that way. So I said, listen, the more reishi mushroom we eat, guess what happens? So I got the kind of neat idea to kind of make, I call it my bee ginger finger cookies. I make them in a, I make them in a, in a form of finger because then if you eat the fingers here, guys, you get less fingers where? Okay, and all these are good, healthy ingredients, okay? Now, it gets better, because here's what happens. Let me show you some more things. You see, ladies, well, they say, wait, then I don't need that kind of mushroom, really? Because the exact same mushroom inhibits and destroys what? Inflammatory breast cancer. There's your copy, guys. Do you follow me? Well, that Dr. Flynn, he's crazy. That's his opinion. Really, Doc, where'd you read that? Can I have a copy? Do you follow me? That's the cool thing, guys. I'm empowering you to get these things. And here's the cool thing. What did I just teach you? I said, do something as a lifestyle to do what? Keep yourself healthy, okay? It gets better. Cancer, reishi, is used to treat what? Do you see what I'm saying? Let's get some more. Guess what I was driving? 
I was, we were driving, and all of a sudden, guess what I saw just down the road here on the tree? I was like, oh, Andy, pull over, because I want to jump out rip it off, because I would take it home, I was going to boil it and drink it. <laughs> it's not a joke. You can't do that. You actually just go to uh, fung, uh, fungi.com, Paul Stammett, number one expert in the world in medicinal mushrooms. He will show you. Or the test kits, guess what? Go, you got them all here, man. Do you, do you really think that God hasn't answered all of our questions? He knows everything we need. He puts it in our environment. No, he puts it in the pharmaceutical drug company, puts it in a pill so you can buy it from him. <laughs> now, my, one of my other favorite mushrooms, guess what? I saw this too, shaga. Shaga is full of melanin. Look at, there's that birch tree again. Okay, now guess what you ever seen on the birch trees here? It looks like a big old growth, a big old mold fungus on there. But here's what happens. Wait, why is that important if it has melanin? Because shaga is really good for what kind of cancer? Melanoma. Do you see what I'm saying? Boy, okay. Now here's the cool part. Who said so? Doc, where did you read that? Can I have a copy? There's your copy. But I'm going to show you something that's going to blow your freaking mind away. Okay, watch. Let's read about it. Here. It talks about destroying cancer is all the great thing it does, but who here knows somebody has cancer or does chemotherapy or radiation? Let's do this. It reduces the toxic effects and pain of chemotherapy and radiation therapy, increases the effectiveness of chemotherapy, prolongs life, and raises the quality of cancer patients, increases appetite. Who says that, Dr. Flitter or them? No. So why the hell aren't there people doing this? See how stupid it is? There's all your research. There's your, you want your cancer people to survive? You want your cancer people to do well? They have all this, it's well documented, but guess what? And guess where it's found? It's found on your freaking trees. Do you see what I'm saying? It's there, God answers all of our questions. It's there, go find it. See, I'm, not, I'm telling you guys what, it's there. I'll give you the information, go get it, okay? Now of course, me, you know what I gotta do out of it? I gotta make a chocolate out of it, <laughs> okay? Now, but here's what happens, shaga mushroom. It's melanin binds to radioactive isotopes, and that's why it gets rid of radiation and chemotherapy. Melanin in shaga reduces the damage to the skin and also sunburns. It reduces the strong damage to healthy tissue during chemotherapy. And guess what? The more shaga you eat, it'll produce more melanin in your body, and you'll start to look kind of Mexican. It's kind of cool. <laughs> it's not a joke. So if you want your year-round tan in Eagle River, start jumping on the birch trees. <laughs> okay? Now... Here's what happens, guys. Do you know why I pull out WebMD? Do you know why I pull it out? Because here's what happens. Because here, if you walk up to your doc about the chemotherapy and radiation thing and go, Doc, do you think WebMD is a really good source? This happens at Bell and Oncology all the time, patients that get sick of doing crap and come to my office. And actually, Rebecca saw a doctor that in Chicago that, for example, had three what? Tumors. Brain tumors, and we shrunk them down to what? And guess what? There's actually a woman over in Escanaba. We, have, we actually also have another girl named Lydia that's you have a brain tumor, shrink them down to nothing by using how? Medicinal mushrooms. See, I can give you examples after examples, but let me tell you about this. All of this is just research, guys, but here. So let's say all of a sudden you walk into Bell Oncology or any oncology place and say, Doc, is WebMD a good source? Yeah, 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 it is. So then why am I taking this? Because they're the who? The fire department. You follow me on that? See, so, but they've created that. They're the gods. No, they're not. God created that tree for you to have that bugger. It gets better. Medicinal mushrooms, the novel blend of medicinal mushrooms, suppress growth in invasive human breast cancer. So you tell me that a medicinal mushroom combination can do that. Ooh, who wants it? My kids get this. My kids will take medicinal mushrooms, and I will every day the rest of my life. And here's what they take. And there's Paul Stam at fungi.com. All right, my beautiful bride's birthday is February 12th. Who is the closest? Wait, 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 February 12th? February 12th? What's that? What age do they start taking it? The minute they come out of the uterus. I mean, heck, we're still attached to the umbilical cord, throw some medicinal mushroom in the mouth. Just go out, just you call our office so you can get it. Okay, so here's the cool part. Okay, so this is a great food source. But here's what happens. It's not a joke. You can get this stuff naturally. Now, so let's look at our good sweeteners, guys. What are our best sweeteners? Xylitol, raw honey. Who was a stupid, retarded doctor who said, don't give your kids honey? Do you see what I'm saying? Don't give your, kid, don't give your kids honey under one year old, but I'll, you inject them with a hepatitis V vaccine. <laughs> Do you see how stupid we hear these things? You hear parents say, oh, don't give your kid honey. He's, not, he, he's too young. Okay. Now, maple syrup, what else is there, guys, those trees out there? 
Burp. Syrup. So you could tap those trees and do what? Boil them down. They taste really sweet. Guess what? Also, too, lacuma. You said, what the heck is lacuma? Lacuma looks like a what? Avocado. It looks like an avocado, doesn't it? One of the healthiest foods on the planet. Now, bees, one of the best things on the planet. Stevia, a green plant. All this in your notes, I'm going to skip through this. But here's your toxic things, guys. Get those freaking pink and yellow and all those packets off your tables and throw them out. Okay, because they destroy your body. They're toxic. Okay. Now, ladies, let me ask you a question. Is fat good for us? Yes, yes it is. But here's what happens. If I would ask you 10 years ago what you said. No. no. But we know that there's essential fatty acids. Now, guess what happens? Here's all our essential fatty acids. Can somebody tell me where you can get all your fatty acids from? Yes. Breast milk. <laughs> it's kind of funny. People in Eagle River would be chewing on uh, birch trees and running around getting breast milk. <laughs> okay? But do you see what I'm saying? Do you understand why I ask these questions again? Carol, were you breastfed? Because why? I want to know if she's been building her body with all the raw materials. I, and then when I ask you about your diet, why do I ask you about your diet? I want to know if you've been building your house with rotten lumber or treated lumber. Simple questions. What does the plant what? Need. Need. Okay. See, it sounds too easy, doesn't it? The choice of health is very easy. The road of sickness is very expensive. Okay. Now, one of my favorite, favorite uh, fatty acids is lauric acid. Why? It out, not only is it one of the best fatty acids, but also destroys viral envelopes. So it's the easiest way to kill viruses. Now, here's the cool part is this. What food source is the most highest of lauric acid besides breast milk? Coconut. Coconut. Who is it? Who? Okay. Man, this is a stud, man. Wow, good job, man. Coconut. So guys, guess what happens, ladies? So your lotions, why do you think they're coconut oil based? Do you see what I'm saying? Remember, coconut oil should be used in three areas of the, three areas of the house. Bathroom, kitchen, and where else? Bedroom. It's not a joke. I'm not making fun there. Because guess what? After my wife is pregnant, we deliver our fourth baby at home again. Guess what happens? Easiest way to repair vaginal lining. It's not a joke. It is. Women, it helps you massively. Okay? The idea is this. Those are all good repair tissue aspects. Because if I put coconut oil on your hand and I put olive oil on this hand, guess what happens? This is oily because it doesn't absorb. This turns into your tissue cells really quickly. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, here's some of my favorite fatty acids, guys. Chia seeds, pumpkin, sunflower, coconut products, walnuts, hemp. Not marijuana, you bunch of hippies. Okay? Maca. Now, here's what happens. Why is hemp such a great food source? Because here's what happens. It has all the essentials. But it's very important for depression. Why? Because here's what happens. It's full of high tryptophan. Why does tryptophan sound familiar, guys? Turkey. turkey. Because what does turkey make you do? Let me show you biochemically how it works. Tryptophan converts to 5-HTP, which converts to what? Serotonin, which converts to? Whoa, 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 whoa. So if you don't have serotonin, you can't sleep either. Why well, do you think depression and insomnia go what? Hand in hand. And then get your deep REM sleep. So if you, instead of going and buying $50 worth of melatonin, maybe we should go get some hemp and put it into our food source. Who wants some hemp? Okay. What's your name, man? You've been a great sport. Now, don't worry, guys. Guess what? I have a bunch of samples for you. Now, please don't try to smoke it because it doesn't work. <laughs> and don't worry, I also have a ton of examples of good fatty acids and stuff too. <laughs> come here, come here. Lay it from the back, come here. I got a whole bag of hemp and stuff for you. See, the cool thing is this. I'm going to get a nice warm welcome for Aaron because Aaron's going to be high as a kite next tomorrow. <laughs> now, guys, very important. My other good fatty acid source, guys, is what? Maca. Why is maca so important? Maca should be used by every woman on the planet. Please, guys, buy this by the dump truck full. Let me show you why. Because this is one of the major building blocks for female and male hormones. But if you actually look up maca, maca is actually known as a female aphrodisiac. Ooh. Okay? So here's what happens. So when, therefore, what happens, I have to make what out of it? Cookie. A cookie. <laughs> so the idea is this. I have to make a cookie out of it. I love cookies. Okay, so therefore what happens is, I said, okay, maca, no one's going to know what a maca cookie is, even though it's a great 
food source, see what it is? It looks like a what? A turnip. Who created it? God. Do you see what I'm saying? Sorry if you're atheist, you have to listen to me anyways, okay? <laughs> But the idea is this, is we have that created in nature and it becomes a food source. It gives us the building blocks. Once again, why do I ask you and want this? Because I want to give you the building blocks to keep you healthy. Now, so the cool thing is this. So I had to make a cookie out of it. So instead of calling my maca cookie, I call it my happy daddy cookie. <laughs> now, happy daddy cookie is kind of fun, but you know, we have seasons, one of my favorite classes, and please, I would love to come back and teach you just desserts because it's one of the funniest things on the planet. <laughs> And here's what happens, because in, in every year I have my famous class, you guys on Facebook I saw, it's called my healthy desserts without the guilt. We have hundreds and hundreds of people that come from all over, because why? Because Christmas is a great time. But Happy Daddy Cookie doesn't really sound good for Christmas, so I then turned it into what I call my ho 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 cookie. <laughs> <laughs> Who said you can't be fun, have, or be, have fun when you're a doctor, okay? But here's what happens. What I want to really get into your brain, guys, is this. If I can teach you the lifestyle stuff that constantly build in your body, isn't that much better than falling apart? Mm. Isn't that much better than doing all things of spending thousands of dollars? I will tell you, this is not a joke. If you come to my office, it's going to cost you a thousand more dollars to actually get healthy. Not a joke. Why? Because you're sick. So don't, don't have a misconception on it. But if I can then teach you how to get back to normal and stay that way, those thousands of dollars are well spent and you never have to do that again. If you do what? Take care of yourself. Does that make sense? That's the whole idea. You need to take care of yourself. Okay? Now, I'm going to skip this. I'm going to skip a couple things. Here's your bad fats. I'm going to skip a couple things while I want to do this one. Because here's the biggest misconception. Okay? No, 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 we'll be done. Guys, give me an extra 15 minutes? Yeah. Okay. So here's what happens. The biggest mistake that we have is we do not drink milk anymore. Okay? Raw milk is illegal. It's illegal. I just got a call from one of my patients. Okay? Holly Spooty. She's actually from, actually, Lakewood. Now, the sad part is this, her organic farmer that was given her raw milk got a letter from the uh, uh, FDA and said, you can't do it, it's illegal. We'll shut you down, we'll take your farm. We can give you drugs and hepatitis and all these junks, but raw milk has been around for thousands of years, we can't do. Isn't that ridiculous? Do you really think, the, who created the FDA? Do you guys vote for the FDA or the EPA? Do you learn how they just jumped in and control everything we do? You understand? Who gave them control? We've got to take it back. These are our food sources. Raw milk is one of the best things on the planet for you. Now. I don't really drink dairy at all. My household is gluten-free and dairy-free. I'll never touch it. Because why? The higher you go up on the food chain, the more chance of damage and toxicity you have. Look at our cows today. Very damaged. Now, the one thing is this. You don't really get milk. Do you understand if you go on notmilk.com or go on the FDA website, that one-third of the milk that you buy from the grocery store is filled with what? Pus. So you might as well just take a Who said so? They allow one-third. Anything over one-third pus, you cannot do. Why do you think there's... Because why? Because those cows are infected and they get pus into the milk and they allow one third in there. Well, over one third, toxic. You know what I'm saying? So just imagine when you go to your local grocery store here and you grab that milk and you drink it, it's a bunch of pimples. Oh my God. It is. That here. Do you want your copy? Okay. Now, let me show you the most important thing that you need to be healthy, bar none. It's called cacao. Now, cocoa is slang, you know that? Cocoa is not a real word, it's called cacao, raw cacao. Now, let me show you why you crave this. Now, the one thing about cacao, it contains a PEA. Do you know what that is? It's a happy neurotransmitter. Remember Emory's neurotransmitter test? PEA was on there. It also contains epicaphrins. You guys ever heard of MAO inhibitor drugs for depression? You have your own natural MAO inhibitor there. Wait, it contains a lot of what, guys? Tryptophan. But it also contains what? Tryptamine serotonin. Do you think God created that when you stressed out, you need more serotonin, so it gives you the what? The food source to get it from? Isn't that cool? It's one of the only food sources that have serotonin in it. Now think about that. That's why you crave what? Now, guess what, guys? It's all destroyed under heat, so your Hershey bars does not count. So when I give you desserts or teach you desserts, why do you think you have to have chocolate? It also is, here, it also is the number one source of magnesium. Magnesium is good for what? Thyroid, heart, liver, do you follow me on that? Mm -hmm. So who needs chocolate every day? We all do. Do we need it to build a healthy body? Do you see what I'm saying? Boy, just think. Am I, as my, my patient, you get to eat chocolate, sweets, cookies, all stuff all the time. Do you see what I'm saying? Because that's how you build your body. See, we have to stop thinking these things are bad. Look at the forms they come in. So stop making healthy fatty acids bad. Olive oil is essential for long-term health. If you cook with it, it's a poison. Do not cook with olive oil. It becomes a poison when you cook with it. That's why, what is your best cooking oil? 
Coconut oil. Okay? Because why? Coconut by nature is the kind of what environment? Very hot. So I gave you all this stuff for your, your good old, good old uh, things. I'm just going to skip through these because I want to get through these. These are all for your notes, guys. Don't touch gluten. It's bad for you. Okay, there you go. <laughs> do, 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 do. Come on, come on. Ah, guys, guess what? Because I like you guys so much, not only are you going to get the presentation, now you're going to get the video, but I'm also, every one of you guys that attended, you're going to get a, a free dessert recipe book on that email too. Okay? For you guys. Because if I can give you the ability to enjoy sweets when you're stressed out, that doesn't kill you, I've accomplished some things. <laughs> Do you follow me? And I'm giving it to you for free. You know saying? Isn't that cool? Aren't we supposed to stick together? Yes. Okay? See, like I always, there is a saying, I know it sounds corny, but that's my thing, so you have to listen to me. Okay? <laughs> Remember, if you take care of God's people, does he take care of you? Yes. Why do you think our office is so busy? You know what I'm saying? And we never have to work at it. Because we teach people, show people, and guess what happens? He sends us the sick all from all over the world. I have people from all over the country. I have people from all over the world, actually, too. It's kind of neat. I've actually been, it's kind of neat. I've been on Oprah's radio show twice, and I just got called last week to be on it again. Do you know what I'm saying? About female hormones. I'm a 38-year-old male. How's that equate? You know what I'm saying? Because I'm teaching a very different thing. But guess what? I'm teaching anatomy and physiology and how to recover naturally. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, medications. Ooh, medications are toxic, aren't they? Yes. They're called what? How much is too much? By medical standards, that bucket fills up. But do you know how they allow Splenda and medications to be allowed approved? It's called the LD50 ratio. That means you take 100 rats. If 51 dies, 51 of them die, guess what? It's not legal. 49 dies, it can be approved. Mm -hmm. That's why Splenda has a what? Has an LD of 48. Aww. So it kills 48 of the rats, but 52 live. So it breaks that ratio, and that's what a medication does. So what it does, it gets it to the level of the bucket, but doesn't flow over. Who said so? You can actually, any medication, if you go on the website, it gives you the LD ratio. Isn't that scary? How can they put toxic stuff in our lotions? How can they put toxic stuff in our food? Because it only kills 48 rats. See, people go, guess what? We, I'm, I'm an environmentalist. I, I'm, a, I'm a PETA person. So I'm not, but I'm just, you know, acting like I am. I'm a PETA person. I don't want you to test on rats. They always test on animals. Why? Because they have to have a, this is their standard. Okay? Do you guys know what PETA stands for anyways? Yeah. People eating tasty animals. <laughs> so, so here, guess what? I pulled out your actual research. There's your copy on that, okay? Now, one of the biggest confusions, and next week I finally got so sick of it because people are doing this all over the country and they're destroying people's thyroids. Can anybody tell me, if you have a thyroid problem, what's the best thing to have for you? Levothyroxine and Synthroid. Synthroid. That's it. Isn't it funny? For who? Everybody. If you have a thyroid problem, you're going to get those two. Isn't that scary? And it'll base your doses on your symptoms and your TSH level. But here's the bad part. Look at all the things that are happening. Weight gain, fatigue, thinning hair, sluggish, depression, constipation. You think that describes most women? <laughs> Not being mean. Okay. So here, this is the thyroid. It's a little gland in your neck. It's actually Latin for shield. It covers the throat. That's why, for example, ladies, when it swells, you have a lump in your what? You have a lump in your throat. So what happens, it produces really three different hormones. Actually four, but they don't even teach that. I'm going to teach that next week. It teaches T4, T3, and RT3. Tyrosine with four iodines. Guys, what is the highest base iodine food on the planet? Sea vegetables. How close do we get sea vegetables to? Kale. But we don't really get it around here, do we? Why do you think more thyroid problems exist in the Midwest than anywhere else in the world? You know what I'm saying? Because we're away from what? Sea vegetables. Okay, kelp and all things like that. But here, now remember, I'm just giving you a global aspect. But here's the thing. That's why iodine is such an important product. Now, because if you lack iodine, because iodine is very important for the thyroid, but iodine is second to what? In the breast tissue. Guys ever heard of fibrocystic breast disease? Mm -hmm. If you lack iodine, you will start to have what? That condition. There is your copy. So that's why when actually women come with fibrocystic breast disease in my office, and Maria from Chicago, who's 26 years old, went pregnant, but her breast was so hard she couldn't touch it. Do you see what I'm saying? What did her husband think? Not being a joke. He couldn't even touch her breast because it hurt so bad. And they started to scar. And I said, whoa. So we didn't guess, we test, and what we found out? Iodine what? Deficiency. So therefore, as I started to give her what she needed, what do you think happened to her breast tissue? They started to disintegrate the cysts, and they started to do what? Ladies, where else do cysts happen? 
So we'll just pull them out. See how stupid that sounds? Instead of like, doing what? Find out why they developed. Okay? So here's one thing. Thyroid function is kind of cool. T4 is not even your active hormone. See, the thyroid has to be looked at more like the Swiss watch. Now, what I mean? Multiple factors have to happen for that thyroid to work. Even if your thyroid produces normal hormone, guess what? It doesn't mean it's active. So, no joke, I'm teaching a three-hour class just on that next week, okay? But here's what happens. You have to understand, if you just measure the thyroid, you will never tell thyroid function. Because guess what? 60% of hormones convert in the liver. So if you're toxic, could that affect your thyroid? See what I'm saying? There is no body part that's separate from another. So when the endocrinologist looks at your thyroid and measures it, what are they doing? They have an incomplete view on your thyroid. That's why testing like this, even if they test this much, it's incomplete, it doesn't even make sense. Okay? Now, let me give you a couple examples. I want to teach you how it works. The main value that they measure is TSH. Is TSH a thyroid hormone? No, it's a brain hormone. Thyroid stimulating hormone. They base all of their medication, levothyroxine and synthroid, on the brain, not even on the thyroid. Isn't that crazy? Because if the brain say, if the brain tells it not to work anymore, that means it's working fine, right? It sounds stupid and giggle, but that's what they do. But the, guess what? The thyroid produces T4, inactive hormone. Now T4 goes to your liver and your intestines and converts to its active form. So if you have a GI problem or if you have a liver problem, can that affect thyroid function? Mm -hmm. Yes, it can. And it needs a little mineral, selenium. Now, here's the funny part. This is all measurable. Do you get, we don't guess, what do we do? So this woman, actually, they, we even got them to test T4. And guess what happened? Oh, you're normal. You're normal with your inactive hormone. But they didn't test her T3, and guess what we found? T3 is abnormally, and that's why she was having thyroid problems. So she actually didn't have a thyroid problem. She had a thyroid co hormone conversion problem, and she had liver problems. She was toxic. So as we detoxified her liver, what happened? The hormones became active, and all of those problems went away. Do you follow me on that? Swiss watch, guys. That's why I created that principle, because that's how it works. Now, here. There's one thing that can stop the conversion, a couple things, that can stop the conversion of actually hormone. Heavy metals, vaccines, amalgam fillings, aluminum cans, do you follow me? Or stress. Remember ladies, stress? Because why? The adrenal glands have a major effect on what? Ooh, who said so? The PDR, remember that? See, see how it all interacts? So if you don't check all those systems, you'll never figure out thyroid problems. So here's the cool thing is this. What is another thing that destroys the thyroid? What's that number one? Soy. soy. Yep. Now here's the cool part. Guess what? Go back to your soy and cancers, but here's the even cooler thing. Do you know on WebMD levothyroxine, do you know what it says? Do you know, what, do you know what one of the contraindications is for, is for levothyroxine? That you cannot eat soy. Because not only does it deactivate the thyroid, it actually deactivates the medication. Who said so? They did. Look on the drug. Do you follow me? Take it to your doc, say, doc, should I eat soy when I'm levothyroxine? Well, sure, it's okay. Really? The drug says we can't. Why? Because it inactivates it. Well, if it inactivates the medication, what do you think it does to the thyroid itself? See, and the cool thing is this. Who said this? I hate to point, keep on pointing this out because you will hear it over and over. Dr. Flynn, he, you know, it's his opinion. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't give you opinions. I give you copies, okay? Now, so when I order blood work, I order all the things that can affect the thyroid. And the number one thing that affects our thyroid, everything not, is our, our autoimmune processes, okay? We won't get into that. That's about an hour discussion. But here, as a chiropractor, can you actually tell if there's a thyroid problem just from your film? Sure you can. Remember that thyroid? It starts to calcify and degenerate. If you have a bone spur, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Yeah. What if your organ starts to calcify? If your kidney starts to calcify, what do you get? Kidney. What if your pancreas? What about your gallbladder? What about your thyroid? So you get thyroid stones, and it starts to calcify. It's easily seen in an x-ray. Now, this is very important when it comes to our female hormones. All right? Um, let's do this. Let me skip through some of this, because I want to get to a couple things. I love this. Number one thing destroys female hormones? <laughs> Sorry. It gets kind of repetitive, doesn't it? Uh, all these things are for your notes, guys, because I don't want to go too long on this. Okay, here we go. Okay, so a big thing, guys, what do we do? 
Okay, we need to detoxify. It's very important. I showed you kind of like how we do things on a daily basis that causes our liver to back up. All the things that we eat, all the things we come in contact with, all the things we put on our skin, guess what? We need to detoxify. So what do we do from there? Well, here's what happens. This is a simple GI x-ray. Yes, you see the spine, but look at all the inflammation that's in that GI x-ray. Okay, guess whose x-ray this was? Joshua Foose. Remember the little autistic kid? Here was his re-x-ray. You know what I'm saying? We don't guess. What do we do? So his chronic inflammatory reactions is GI. So did his neurotransmitters get better? Mm -hmm. did, his, did his immune system get better? Mm -hmm. Do you follow me on that? Mm -hmm. See how we start to repair his body and his body rebuilt itself and you start to see normal diagnostic tests. See, the cool thing is we don't guess, we test, but you know what I love more in testing? Retesting. Because you can go up and say, Doc, I feel wonderful. You know what I say? I don't care. You can feel wonderful and have a heart attack. I want to see what your diagnostic is. Do you follow me on that? So that's the great thing about it. So when we look at natural detoxification things, kelp, iodine, beets, what's the third one? Chocolate, okay? Hemp, garlic, all these foods. Look at these things, okay? Can you guys do me a favor? Can you guys promise me, okay? Please raise your right hand. I solemnly swear to at least eat one of these detoxifying foods per week. Amen. Do you follow me? Because I want you guys to get into the habitual patterns of eating these things so you can nice and slowly start to detoxify. Fair enough? Now, I know, guys, I gave you a lot of stuff tonight. Guess what? I taught you so general stuff, it was scary. Isn't it funny? You're like, really? That's general? You should see what I do as a doctor. You see what I teach doctors. I get to teach doctors. Yeah, it's kind of cool. When I was teaching at Texas Medical College, do you see what I'm saying? And because why? One of my clo closest friends, actually, Nathan Bryant, he's a, actually a professor and researcher, one of the top researchers in the country down at the University of Texas Medical College. And so guess what? I was down there teaching. I get involved. I get asked. I get, last year, I got asked to speak at the largest nursing conference in Wisconsin with 5,000 nurses there. And it's kind of funny. Four-day conference, who they put last on the last day? Okay, so all these women are sitting through all these classes, and it's really funny, because after I got done and taught them differently, guess who's the keynote speaker in Madison this year? You are. I am. Now, what am I trying to show you is this. It's not about me, guys. Honestly, you understand that? But if we can give these people information to change your life, guess what? That's what it's about. It's about teaching people. I came up here on my own dime for what? To get you guys to think differently. So when you walk out this door, I guarantee when you leave here, you will struggle with everything I said because you've been conditioned for so long wrong. But I have to recondition your thinking. Do you follow me on that? But here's what happens. Why do you think I give so many copies to you? Why do you think I'm gonna give you your copies? So guess what? If you just research the right things, see you've been taught to research like the fire department. Do you know what I'm saying? When you Google things, what naturally can I use for period? What naturally can I use for my thyroid? It doesn't work. You have to individually figure out this lady, this lady, this lady, do you follow me on that? Each one of them. So when I actually teach the thyroid, I could teach doctors 12 hours on the thyroid and still not have enough time. See, it's when I go over everything to general. Remember, a couple concepts that I call the wellness way. We don't guess, we test. Now the cool thing is this. You guys are actually going to get this video. But if you want to watch my other videos on tox, detox and all the other things, female hormones and all the things, go to our websites, go to our YouTube channel. Guess what? Call our office, watch our website, thing. The wellness clinics, thewellnesswayclinics.com. We have events, we have stuff going on all the time. And the majority of it is free. The only things that cost you money if you come to my dessert class so, you can, so I can afford the desserts. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? Because you guys will pig out, okay? <laughs> see, so that's one thing, because I believe that if we share this information to you guys, guess what? You can make better choices. And guess what? You'll no longer be the old monk anymore. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We have to break that chain. I get very sick every day of what I see. I leave my office every day jacked up. I love Monday mornings because I get to save lives all day. I would be at my office 24-7 if I didn't have the most beautiful wife and kids. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? But here's one thing. Because why? Because people need it. Honestly, how many people here know somebody that's sick? Is it fun? You know what I'm saying? It takes away from everything. I can't handle that. I hope you guys can handle here. Now remember, you don't have to be me in order to make a big impact on people. Let me ask you a question. Is 
Le Rebecca Levine making an impact on people by what she chose to do with her skincare line. She's changing lives. She just chose one thing she's very passionate about. She doesn't want you to toxify yourself on your skin. Okay? She doesn't have to do everything, she, but she picked one thing she's very passionate about. And guess what? So should you. You know what I'm saying? Pick one thing. Maybe you just want to learn about detoxifying foods. Maybe you just want to do these things. Maybe you want to do these. Maybe you want to learn about the thyroid. But guess what happens? Think differently, though. Think like the carpenter. Go back to the plant. What does my body need? You see what I'm saying? Don't look for natural treatments. That's wrong. When I was in naturopathic school, our professor said, give me your best remedy for diabetes. I was like, that doesn't make any sense. I want to find out why they got it in the first place. Otherwise, you took it, helped you, but you took it, it didn't help her. Why? It failed. No, it didn't. You're two different people inside. Do you follow me? Different stressors, different traumas, different thoughts, okay? So remember, I promise you, if you're a couple, you will talk tonight, and you'll be very excited, and then you're going to go talk to your friends and say, you want something? You should get that metal filling out. You want something? You shouldn't vaccinate your kid. And they go, what? You, you crazy? Because they've been conditioned to use Crest and Colgate, and milk does the body good, and nighttime stiffly seizing coffee head medicine. Do you follow me on that? So what happens is this, it's our job, that's why I gave you analogies. First of all, guys, before we leave, am I against drugs or surgery? No. No, no they're beautiful, we love them, what we want them to do. But that's not health, can you agree with me on that? Mm -hmm. So I want you guys to understand this. It's a choice. Toxins, disease, detox, health, all these are sayings, good food, good skin care, good mental attitude, see what I'm saying? Bad thoughts. How many guys on my Facebook? How many guys are you on my Facebook? How much positive thinking stuff do I put out all the time on my Facebook? Do you see what I'm saying? A lot. Because I choose to get up early in the morning and put good stuff in my head. I choose to say, guess what? And ladies, do you know what's very difficult for you guys? It's not a joke. I want you guys to go home, ladies. Guys, you ever notice this? You ever watch it? I have this, I have this purposely in my office. I'm going to tell you a little trick. It's kind of cool. I have mirrors right when you walk in my rooms. Do you know why? Because I watch you guys. And here's what, here's what a woman does. She kind of does this. Takes a side view. You know, you know what a guy does? He does this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you notice that? See, it's really sweet. Because you know what I want you guys to do tomorrow for your thought process? I want you to do something simple for you. You guys are all going to choose different foods. And you're going to get adjusted by Michelle. OK? Because she will fix your trauma. You see, and I don't even know her as a doc, but I know she's a well-trained doctor, what she does, because she's educated, do you follow me? Okay? But the idea is this, tomorrow morning, I want you to get up and look in the mirror. I want you to look in the mirror, look at right eyes. Do you know what? You women will have a hard time with this. You look at right in the mirror and say, I love you. You're awesome. You're going to change life today. You know what you guys will do? You women will go, you're awesome. <laughs> and guess what happens? Us guys, you'll be like, you're, <laughs> you're handsome. <laughs> I, do, I love telling myself how good I am in the morning. You know what I'm saying? Here, ladies, what I want you to do is this. Ladies, what I want you to do, please do this, and I do this with all my patients. I say, ladies, do this for me. I want you to write down everything you say to yourself in one day. And if you're married, I want you to say that with emotion to your spouse about them. You're not pretty. Your butt's too big. You're not a good mom. You're not, do you see what I'm saying? You create that thought every day. I want you to reverse it around. What doctor teaches you that? Do you follow me? Guess what? You're beautiful. You're beautiful. You know, you're beautiful. Do you follow me on that? Mm -hmm. You say, so what happens is let's start teaching. Let's start encouraging people. Isn't that what God called us to do? To encourage and lift other people up? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So guys, thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. This was fun. Mm -hmm. okay. So.